Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be reviewing the absolutely gorgeous Dior Tree Oblique Pure Glow Eyeshadow Palette. So if you want to hear my thoughts on these and see a demo, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Part of the new Dior 2021 Spring Collection came out for a brief moment on Selfridges. So they had two of the Trio Bleak eyeshadow palettes that were available online. I believe they also had a lipstick and they had a quint. I'm not sure if it's part of the spring collection. It wasn't available for purchase at the time, but it looked really pretty. I feel like Dior's very, very vague about the release. I don't know that all of the information is available yet, but their spring collection is called the Pure Glow. And right now it looks like there's gonna be a range of lipsticks coming out, another lipstick in this launch, lip glow oils, and then of course we have the eyeshadow palettes. I'm not sure about that quint, but it looks really up my alley. I Either way, I was really, really excited to see these eyeshadow palettes. I was interested from the first moment that I saw these. Honestly though, I thought these were cheek palettes and I kind of wish they were still because Dior has some of the best cheek products in my opinion. Bronzers, blush, and highlights, they really kill it. So I was hoping this would be cheek palettes, but obviously when you see them, they're <laughs> not. So let's go over the details of these. I purchased these off of Selfridges at the moment. They're no longer on Selfridges, so I have no date as to when these are gonna come out again, but when they do, I'll let you guys know on both my community tab and in a pinned comment on this video as soon as I know when they're available again. Don't know why they came out exclusively on Selfridges and then they just disappeared, but I'm very happy that I was able to get my hands on them for you guys. So they're going to come in their typical velvet pouch and then you have the regular eyeshadow palette packaging. Now, I really wish Dior would update this. It's so bleh to me. Anyways, but whatever. You got your Dior packaging. When you open it up, it does have a mirror and it does come with the two applicators. The brush applicator, I feel like they should stop trying, but we've learned to appreciate a good sponge tip applicator. Here are both of the Tree Oblique palette colors. So we have Pure Petals, which is a little bit more warm, and then we have Triple Bloom, which is not quite so warm and a little bit deeper. I will say I do think these look very very, very close to each other and just by even swatching I feel like you're not going to need both but what is of course the most breathtaking part of this product is the embossment of the actual eyeshadows this is the reason why I bought it it really hurt me to touch these to swatch these because I wish it would look like this forever now upon swatching I don't really like the way that these feel now both of these the top one is going to be more of a satin shade the middle one is going to be more of a metallic kind of glittery shimmer shade. It's very, very faint. It's not really foiled by any means, but you can see it has a little bit more of a shine and shimmer in there. And then the bottom one is supposed to be a matte. It's not a true, true matte. There is definitely a sheen to it, but it is definitely the most matte finish of the three. But I do think that this formula would be flattering on more mature eyelids. What I don't like about the swatching of these is that they felt kind of hard to me. They weren't a soft formula like the new Dior Quince. So these aren't gonna match those. Like the reason why it doesn't look like it's been touched is because they are harder. Now the shimmer shade is going to be the softest formula. The satin shade, a little bit hard. I didn't get much pigmentation off of them. And the bottom shade, I just don't like the way this feels at all. It feels almost sticky. You don't get much pigmentation from the bottom shade. It just feels sticky when you run your hand across. I feel like I'm worried about how this is going to apply. Both of the swatches on my hand did take double layers and the first swatches were not very impressive. Let's individually go into each palette. I'm going to try one palette on each eye and then I'll give you my thoughts as we try it on. I apologize for my video yesterday where I didn't zoom in for my lip swatches. I was so focused on the new background that I just completely forgot that. Not today though. Not today. We're going to start off on this eye and we are going to use arguably the brighter one. I wouldn't say this is necessarily lighter, but it does have a little bit more pop to it, especially in this shade, and it is a little bit more warm. I'm using Too Faced Eyeshadow Insurance. I almost forgot to mention this. So these guys are made in Italy and it has a suggested shelf life of six months. And online this does say it is limited edition. Okay, so 
we are going to go pretty basic with application. I'm using my Esum V34 and we're gonna start off with this shade right here. You're not gonna get any fallout with this formula. As you can see, just so you can get a feel for what we're working with. And I'm going to apply this to the crease. It's very, very soft, but I am happy to see that pigment is picking up. I was a little bit worried based on the feel of it. That looks really, really nice. And I think this is going to be a flattering formula for more mature eyelids. Okay, now let's work on the shade that I'm a little bit concerned about, which is going to be the matte shade and the defining shade. So this is an Esum V33 and I feel like I might need to really dig in there, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, this is exactly what I expected to happen. So it's not picking up on the brush very well. I'm not getting too much pigmentation. I'm able to build a little bit of depth, as you can see. So it's not non-existent. But just compared to shadow formulas that we're used to right now in this day and age and the formulations that we can get, personally, I'm not a big fan of this. I don't like how hard we have to build. That being said, if you're very heavy handed and if you have a lighter complexion, this might be something that you're interested in. But if you have any type of color to you and you're used to those powdery formulas, I don't know that you will be pleased with this formula. And you're only getting three shadows, so there's no excuse for the price that you're paying for every shadow not to work. Now, as far as the price, I didn't say that purposefully because honestly, I cannot remember how much I paid and I cannot find the price on the website. Uh, it's gonna range like 50 to $60. So this, in my opinion, is a dud. No, no, no. All right, now let's play with the shimmer shade. I'm gonna put this all over the lid. This is the softest formula, but it doesn't have too much of a pigmentation to it. It's just gonna be kind of a soft golden gleam on the eye. This is really pretty. Is it anything unique? No, do I wish it had more color to it? Yes, but for a soft glimmer to the eye, really, really pretty. All right, so this is the eye look that we're working with. Definitely not the performance that I was hoping for. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this one is a triple bloom. This one I would argue is a little bit deeper just based on the deepest matte shade and it's a little bit more cool toned. So I'm gonna use the exact same brushes, the exact same technique. We're gonna start off with this shade right here. Now this shade right here is a little bit more metallic compared to the top shade in the first palette that we used to put my eye primer on. So let's see what we think of that. Yeah, so I like this better. I feel like it's applying easier. Though I do like the peachiness of the first palette application wise, this one is a lot easier to work with. But again, it still is kind of a soft application. But for me, for a crease shade, that's okay. <sighs> let's find out what we think of this one. Let me see if we work with a natural hairbrush, if that'll pick it up any better. This is a refer 14 brush. No, no, no. For anything, I feel like these synthetic hairs of this Eason brush is gonna do a little bit better. I'm gonna try my finger. I mean, the finger is gonna pack it on better, but then it's, it felt sticky, so as I assumed, if you pack it on with your finger, it's also gonna be a little bit harder to blend. So pick your battle. And it's looking a little bit patchy. <sighs> I don't think using my finger was the right move for that because it's sticky, it's not gonna blend. <laughs> okay, let's try out the shimmer shade. Now this is less golden than the first palette and it's a little bit brighter. I'm kind of confused by that. But okay, I feel like the gold would have gone better in this one. This shade's really pretty. Again, nothing to write home about, just like that first one, but it does amp up the palette. It does work well. I think it will blend away a little bit if you blend after you apply it, so you might need to go in, but it's pretty. You can see that Christian Dior is starting to go down. All right, you guys. Um, I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup and <laughs> 
I'll be back with my final thoughts. All right, you guys, so I did liner and lashes. I'm not gonna lie, because the makeup was a little bit underwhelming to me, I went very thick with my eyeliner today. As you can see, there really isn't a difference between the two looks. You can tell a little bit of a tone difference from this eye to this eye, but for the most part, I definitely cannot recommend that you pick up both because they're looking very similar on my eyes. I mean, overall, if you couldn't tell though, I don't like these trios. I'm not gonna recommend them to you. I think they are extremely overpriced and it's a shame because Dior now has a very good eyeshadow formula and this is not their good eyeshadow formula. I think these are very, very expensive. The only really good thing about these are how pretty that they look. Um, yeah, if you're into the type of eyeshadow that I'm into, I can't recommend these to you. Now, I would say maybe this would work for you if you have a very fair complexion and you're looking for something that isn't going to overpower your face, this would work for you. But I really still feel like that you can get better. I'll be honest, you guys, if I hadn't already filmed my worst makeup of 2020, I really feel like these would have made it in there because they are so, so pricey for what you're getting, the lack of color that you're getting. I feel like the colors don't really Really work that well and um, I'm a little bit disappointed Dior. Guys, I love Dior. I feel like they've been killing it this year. All of their new Quint reformulations, their highlights have been amazing. I love all of their blushes. I have loved all of their releases this year and they close it off with a dud. So <laughs> that is all I have for today's video. Tomorrow I will have my Charlotte Tilbury quad review up for you guys. So that's in the works as well. I just wanted to get this one up for you guys before you purchase this just so that you know so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you aren't subscribed to my channel already i would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one